My name is Paul Holly and I'm an Anglican priest. I've been ordained for about 16 years, but the last seven years I've been based in Switzerland. Where I've been working with the Anglican UN uh, representation. And it's really drawn from that that the Anglican Health Network started mm -hmm. because we found ourselves uh, working alongside the World Health Organization, the UN AIDS and the Global Fund, and realized that as Anglicans we needed to become more organized. So the Health Network is an attempt to uh, draw those who are active in healthcare uh, to collaborate, to interact with one another, uh, so that we can be more effective as uh, health providers and be more conscious of that uh, ministry and purpose that we are engaged in. As we began to consult with members of the Anglican Church throughout the world, we realised that there was a, a fundamental problem with financing health services. At the time of conceiving of the Health Network, uh, we began to be aware of the model of microinsurance, which provides a risk pool within local communities for very low premiums uh, to cover their health needs. So we've explored that and feel that it could be a, a very valuable economic model on which to base health services in some of the poorest communities. Microinsurance developed out of the microfinance industry. You'll appreciate that when uh, someone takes out a loan, uh, it may be that uh, that person dies before the loan is paid off. So the microfinance industry developed uh, a small premium to cover that eventuality. They discovered also that as they lent money to farmers for crops, then if there were inclement weather conditions, uh, that it was helpful to have some sort of insurance against poor harvests. Health microinsurance is more complex, um, but still has arisen from the same source and uh, requires a much wider uh, base to draw from than the microfinance industry itself. So our partners, Microinsure, have been very pleased to uh, partner with us as a, as a church uh, so that we can look at the parish structures throughout the developing world and find a large enough risk base that would make a health microinsurance scheme viable. We've got two microinsurance pilots in uh, the Anglican Communion at the moment, one in India, in, in the Diocese of South Kerala, based around a large hospital, a teaching hospital that uh, has a community around about 100,000 people and we have uh, arranged a policy that will draw in some of the poorest communities there and give them comprehensive cover in that hospital. The second pilot that we have running is in Tanzania. That's only recently been launched, in the Diocese of Dar es Salaam. And that's a slightly different model because uh, we are looking at the capacity of the parish infrastructure uh, to market uh, a health insurance policy. So we, we have one small clinic in, in that diocese, but we have contracted with a range of other faith-based healthcare providers uh, so that when we have created a, a large enough risk pool within uh, the, the parish infrastructure, they'll be able to receive services from an, a range of hospitals. The challenge in Tanzania is to overcome some of the suspicion about insurance and of course the lack of education in insurance uh, because it's a relatively new concept. Mm -hmm. Though uh, the government has in the past uh, developed health insurance uh, in a way that uh, has not succeeded and people are therefore reluctant to put their hard earned resources into a scheme until it's proven and they can be sure that when they do go to a hospital that they'll receive the treatment that they're expecting. So uh, the challenge for our marketing team in Dar es Salaam is to build that confidence and to use the trust that's placed in the church uh, to, to guarantee that they will receive what they are paying for. Microinsurance uh, allows us to do two things. Yeah. One is to provide the communities we serve with uh, a financial service that allows them to have a far more predictable uh, health expenditure, uh, avoiding the risks of uh, occasional disease and illness. 
The other benefit is that it provides our hospitals with a stronger revenue base because rather than uh, charging people fees, which they have to minimise uh, in order to allow the poor to access their services, rather than do that they're able to make claims on an insured policy. Uh, so we believe that we're doing two things at once through this programme and that there'll be a cycle of improvement both in our services and in the health of the people.